Hey, Dirt Farmer Jay here from DirtFarmerJay.com. You've got a small electrical device and you need to power it with an AC adapter, but you need to get it right. Hey, stick around and I'll make sure that you do. Hey, Dirt Farmer Jay here from DirtFarmerJay.com. Not long ago, we offered an episode on AC adapters, how to choose the right AC adapter. Well, we got a lot of views and a lot of comments from our viewer family, and apparently we missed a couple key points, and I'm gonna rectify that in this episode. There's a couple things you need to get right no matter what. One is the polarity of the device, and if you check that earlier episode, we show you the polarity markings that are both on the AC adapter and the device you're powering. So if you get the polarity mixed up, you're likely gonna fry the device. So get that right using those markings. The second thing you need to make sure is that what you're powering the device with matches in the way of amperage. So one of the things that we overlooked is someone asked us, can you use different voltage? So for instance, this product right here is putting out a nine volts can you use uh, can use it to power a device that uses different voltage? The answer is no. Think of it this way. In your household, you wouldn't try to plug in a 110 volt device like a lamp into a 220 volt circuit, would you? Of course not, it would fry it. So the voltages need to match. So make sure that whatever the voltage label says on the AC adapter matches the device that you're powering. Secondly though, amperage can be different. So again, think like your house is. If you've got a circuit of receptacles and they're all connected to a branch circuit, a 15 amp or 20 amp circuit breaker, you can plug in something that's only using an amp or an amp and a half. Why? Because the device just takes what it needs, not more, not less, and nothing gets burnt out. You don't put larger devices on the branch circuit that will trip the breaker, but you can put smaller ones. Hence, when you're doing AC adapters, if I had something here that said it's 1.6 amps, but the voltage matches and the polarity matches and the tip matches the device, and it uses less than 1.6 amp, 1 1.6, you're fine. But if it's drawing two amps, let's say, then this is going to underpower the other device and perhaps damage it. So just make sure you have the adequate amount of amperage and that the voltages match. Another important consideration is the tip of the adapter. So these diameters have to match as well as the configuration and this actually has much to do with polarity. A simple solution if you're trying to power various low power consumption devices like this that can also run on batteries, then you can buy a kit that has a variable switch for different outputs over here, and on this end has different plugs that can be put on to match the device. However, the easiest way we have found is to pair this, the adapter, with the device from the get-go, and we do that by simply labeling this adapter with the correct device name, and therefore, when these end up in a pile in a drawer like most of us have somewhere, you can always identify what this is for this device when you get tired of running it on batteries. Now, the questions also come up. What is an adapter adapting? So we're converting AC to DC. So think of it this way, in battery powered devices, batteries deliver DC. They don't do alternating current. So therefore the adapter needs to take alternating current, convert it to DC so that this kind of device or others uh, like it can run either on the battery or the supplied power that's coming through the adapter. That's one thing it's adapting. The second thing it's adapting is stepping down the power requirement because while the voltage may be uh, compatible with the adapter, usually what the voltage on the output side is quite a bit lower. So like on this little device, the output is nine volts and the amperage 
is 1.6 amps. So this is adapting voltage down and then supplying the right amperage. So it's adapting there. The third thing it's adapting is the polarity and the port size according to the pin at the end. So that's what the adapter title really is talking about. Although we didn't talk about it in this episode, you can find a link in the description down below if you wanna know the relationship between volts, amps, ohms, and watts. It's a really interesting ratio. And if you know two of those pieces of information, you can figure out the other two. So check out the link below, and when that video is produced, we'll put that link down there for you to enjoy. You know, another thing that people really struggle with is rewiring lamps. Check out this video that we produced earlier that show you how to safely wire a table lamp. And while you're at it, check out this other video that we produce that YouTube thinks is perfect from our catalog for you. Until the next time, this is Dirt Farmer Jay from DirtFarmerJay.com.